Hey watch friends, today we're going to be checking out an offering from the Thai micro brand Wise, and this is part of their Adamasca series, specifically the AD773. In case you missed it, already featured a detailed unboxing of this, I do highly encourage you to go back and check that out. They have some seriously impressive packaging, definitely worth a look. We're going to go ahead and dive straight into this, but before we get started for admin matters, if you saw that banner, they did send this one into the channel, and I don't have to send it back, so I of course always want to be upfront about that. Additionally, I will of course have a link down to their website in the video description if you care to check this out further. This one is actually live for ordering as of time of publishing. As far as the basic specs, it comes standard with a one year warranty. Not the longest in the world, however, as we'll see, it has reliable components, so it shouldn't be a problem there. As far as the case, measured from roughly the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock position, this is coming in on my calipers at 39.1 millimeters. The crystal steps down pretty significantly, and ordinarily this is where I'd take the bezel measurement, but as you can see, it's really actually integrated into the case. The crystal itself is uh, measuring on the exterior at 33.1 millimeters. The lugs are a strap change friendly 20 millimeters, which is nice because they do come with two different straps. The lug to lug is a nice wrist versatile 46.3 millimeters. The total thickness is coming in at 11.2 millimeters, which is actually deceiving because even though that's already pretty thin, as you can see, it has a very tall box edge sapphire crystal and that is inclusive of that crystal. This thing is exceptionally thin in person. As far as the crystal itself, as I already mentioned, this is a heavily box edged sapphire crystal and it does of course fe feature inner AR coating as well. The movement, this has, is beating away with a Miyota 9019. For anyone not familiar with it, it's going to be the same as most of your other 9 series, or specifically the 9015. So as you can see, it is a date version. It's going to be automatic, high URB, 28,800 beats per hour, hacking, hand winding, uh, around a 42 hour power reserve, all that kind of good stuff. The main difference between the 9019 and 9015 is it does have a shorter stack, and that's part of what allows it to achieve this thinness. The water resistance is coming in at 100 meters or 10 atmospheres. Plenty respectable for a dress style watch. Very pleased with that. The weight on this strap is coming in at 65.6 grams. So really quite light. And as we'll see, it pretty much disappears on the, whisk, the wrist between the weight of, uh, of this, the lightweight, as well as the thinness and everything. This just wears like a dream, but we'll see that and check it out further. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get a better feel for what this one's actually like to live with. First for the colors. This is available in the silver with a blue accented second hand that we're checking out today. There's additionally a dark gray version as well as a dark aqua blue. And there's another silver variant that actually has old radium and it loses that blue accent. There are a variety of other colors available if you go for the non-Damascus versions that are part of the 87 series. As far as the dial itself, this has a pronounced radial sunburst pattern. I say pronounced because depending on the angle, you can definitely see that pattern very clearly and it adds a lot of light play. However, it is subtle enough that it does disappear when you want it to as well. As far as the coloration on this particular variant, it is a very light silver color. And in that respect, depending on the lighting and the angle, it can sometimes pick up a little bit more of a whitish hue, sometimes a little more of a cream hue to it, but it's a nice versatile color. And it really, I think if you are a white watch fan, it's going to scratch that itch for you. As far as the dial layout, this has printing at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. At the top, you have the Ys with Adamascus, and then down at the 6 o'clock position, you have automatic as well as your water resistance. As you move further out, in front of the markers, you can see that there are 12 hour indicators as well, which I think are cleanly integrated and they actually disappear when you're not really looking for them. Obviously, when you're looking at them, they're very noticeable. As far as on the perimeter, so when you go out to the far edge, this does have a printed chapter ring as well. And with that, you're going to have your numerals written at the five minute increments, and then you have hashes in between. So nice precision legibility. I think it's actually a clean aesthetic overall. So even though it has a fair amount on the dial, I really don't think it seems busy at all. At the 6 o'clock position, you do have a date window, as we already looked at, and that is nicely framed and incorporated in there. As far as the date wheel itself, it is sort of color matched on this particular version in that it is a fairly light dial with a white date wheel. However, it is not a true color match, and there is some contrast as far as that. And on the other variants, I believe it's just straight white as well, so not color matched at all there. As far as the hardware, the handset on this, for your second hand, it's what I would describe or your minute hand rather, is what I would describe as kind of like a blunted spear. Then when you go over to your hour hand, you're looking at more of like a sword style, also blunted there as well. In both cases, they are polished and they have a nice facet cut down the middle. What that does is, especially as we'll see in the outdoor footage here, 
this really adds a lot of light play um, to that. So it really helps actually with contrast and legibility. Even though that's somewhat counterintuitive when you talk about getting the glare or reflection on there, it actually helps to brighten that up, um, which is nice there. As far as the second hand, the second hand is one of the things that made me select this particular variant. The second hand, um, as we already talked about and as you can clearly see, is a blued, which actually looks like a heat blued to my eye because it does really pick up that vibrant iridescence. For those who aren't familiar with heat blued, you're in for a treat. Whenever that hits the light just right, it really glows. It, vib it has a vibrancy to it that's unlike anything else out there. Really love that. I'm a big, big fan of heat blued. As far as the layout, you can see that this does have kind of a lollipop configuration with a trapezoid that's integrated there. This, like otherwise watches, um, can be uh, deceiving as far as the loom application, as we'll see here momentarily. Despite the dressier style, it really packs a lot of punch. Shifting over to the markers, you can see that trapezoid theming continues over to those as well. You can see it's most prominent, of course, at the 12 o'clock position with a larger trapezoid as well as the loom area that we'll check out here momentarily. As you check those out, though, they are a subtle, almost like tooth-like trapezoid. And they actually do have, it's easy to miss, but there is a ridge down the middle. So that adds for not only depth, but that does, again, bring through that nice faceting, which gives you really attractive light play, depending on the way the light's hitting that. That's definitely a nice touch. Without further ado, though, let's check out that loom. The loom on Wise Watches, this is a real sleeper, especially on this dress style watch. You would not necessarily expect it to pack as much punch as it does, but Wise has become known for having really strong loom, and this one is no exception. Again, despite the dressy style, it really seems to glow quite brightly, and it actually endures nicely as well. Zero complaints there. That's excellent. Shifting over to the case, normally this is again where I would talk about the bezel. However, in this case, you can see the case itself actually serves as the bezel. And that is a really cool touch. So the case itself just comes right up and integrates with that sapphire crystal there. And with that box edge, it kind of replaces the effect of a bezel. And I really like the look of that. Quite attractive, especially on this dress style watch. This case flow reminds me a lot of like an Omega, or rather a uh, Grand Seiko. The hand, or the uh, markers rather, are a little more reminiscent of like an Omega Aquaterra, as some others have uh, pointed out. But as far as this case profile, to me it just very much has that Grand Seiko kind of vibe to it. By no means do I think it's an homage, um, but at the same time, I really think it has that attractive look and flow. The flow itself is really, in my, to my eye, quite elegant, especially for this dress styling. It just seamlessly melds and integrates. You can see that there is a flat cut down the middle there to give you your kind of quasi mid case. Then you have very pronounced chamfer cuts. That gives you, so you have a lot of presence from the overall profile, but that really gives you a lot of visual slimming to that on an already slim watch. Additionally, that allows them to play a little more with the finishing. As you can see, this is Damascus steel all over. Specifically, this is an integration or incorporation of 316L stainless steel as well as 304L stainless steel. For those who aren't familiar with the Damascus process, that's actually a forging process where they layer those two metals together and then fold them over and over again. That's what gets these distinctive patterns that are going to be unique to every single watch. And that's one of the things that I really love, um, whether you're talking about minerals or Damascus or whatever else, the fact that it truly is going to be a one of, a one of love. A one of one, rather. As far as the case flow, as we already talked about, very thin uh, overall, but especially I think that look of the quasi mid case uh, there where that, uh, that flat comes into play really gives a nice visual slimming. As far as the lug downturn, you can see that this comes right in line, just a little bit actually past the case back, which is nicely touched, and we'll look at that further. As far as the lug profile, you can see this has a really prominent overall silhouette for it. It has a very bulbous, almost like cushion-like kind of flow to that, which again, I think is very Grand Seiko in styling. So you do have prominent lugs. However, with that significant chamfer cut, that really visually slims those out. But I love the fact that, especially with this Damascus version, I love how much that allows you to showcase and really actually appreciate that Damascus pattern. I think that's an excellent call and the perfect case shape for this. As far as the three o'clock side, you can see that there is technically no crown guard. However, with the way that that flows out, it almost serves as kind of a partial crown guard uh, with the way that that's integrated there. As far as the crown itself, this is coming in at 6.3 millimeters. Counter to what you might expect for a dressier style watch, this actually is a screwing crown. However, with being a, an automatic, um, you know, no problems there. It's not like you're having to wind it every day. And I do appreciate that that's probably part of what allowed them to achieve the 100 meters water resistance, though some other push pulls do have that as well. But I know some people will prefer that. 
As far as uh, the styling, you can see that this is a wedge shape to it. So it does kind of cut into the case, which I think integrates really nicely. The pattern on it is what I would describe as kind of like a gear cut. One of the things that's really slick is that Damascus finish actually carries over to the crown, and we're going to see that's all over the place with this watch. On the exterior, you can see that this is signed, and then you can get a little glimpse of that pattern for that as well with the Damascus flow coming through. It's excellent there. Shifting over to the case back, the case back on this is a screw-in construction. As you can see here, once again, that Damascus pattern carries over to the back, uh, not only of the lugs, but the actual case back itself as well. So despite the fact that this is tucked and hidden, it's a real treat when you see that and flip it over. Really like that. Additionally, despite the fact that this watch is predominantly polished, that Damascus really kind of becomes a little more subdued depending on the way the light's hitting it. With this though, they actually made it a little more prominent and a little more traditional in that this has a somewhat brushed finish, particularly on the flats, but then you have a slightly light lighter polish on the edges of that. So that adds for a nice light play. This does have a large exhibition window in the middle, and then you can see that this has a custom rotor on this uh, 9019 with, of course, a Geneva striping that's standard there, as well as the WISE logo or in, in insignia. And as we already talked about, this is very well tucked, so that's part of what gives this slim overall feel and look and just kind of melts into your wrist. And shifting over to the bracelet, you can see that this wears quite nicely, in my opinion, on my six and a half inch wrist. I think it fits very well with a somewhat short lug to lug of 46.3 millimeters. So despite the fact that this is a little larger than some would prefer, and we'll talk about that further, I still think it fits very nicely. This comes with, as I mentioned, two different straps. You actually get this blue version, which has a nice texture as well as contrast st stitching to it. Both of these are leather straps. They're extremely pliable right out of the box. They really have a lot of bend to them, just drape right over the wrist. Quite, uh, quite nice there. Both of them do also feature quick release spring bars on the back as well, so it'll be easy to switch those out. And then if you have any other straps you like, I wear it off of a leather version. Um, probably go with like a Kohler Reb strap or something like that. Um, but with uh, with these, it's going to be very easy to change out and then standard 20 millimeter sizing as well. As far as the black version, that one changes it up. So that has more of like a slab construction and it has matching stitching as well. So you can really play with the look to suit it to your own individual taste. One of the things that's really slick uh, with this is, first off, it does have a large range of holes. So you can see that there's quite an extensive uh, list or lineup of, uh, of holes there, so it should accommodate a wide variety of wrist sizes. But the coolest part is this actually features Damascus buckles not on one, but on both of the straps. That's something I've seen people pay as much as a hundred or even more dollars to get custom Damascus buckles or clasp um, alone. Here you can see uh, that these buckles are actually custom made with not only the, the Damascus on the buckle itself, but even that tang or that fold over through there, that has a nice noticeable Damascus pattern. And then these are signed as well. So really, really nice touch. And the fact that you get two of them is just absolutely crazy at the price point we'll talk about momentarily. All right, so now that we have all that out of the way, you hopefully have a much better feel for this watch. Can't emphasize enough that the pattern itself, you know, some of you, it, certainly it might be too bold um, for you, but I've really been actually impressed on how well this walks the line of it's kind of bold when you want it to be, and it's subdued when you want it to be with uh, that Damascus pattern, or at least relative to Damascus watches. So for somebody who's been on the fence about Damascus, I think this is a great entryway. As far as some comps, checking out here is next to a Citizen. This is a 40 millimeter, gives you an idea of sizing. And you can see this one is more of a white cream coloration um, here as well. And you can see just an idea as far as how those two colors compare. And you can see some of why I say this is somewhat of an off-white as much as it is a silver. But that gives you an idea. This one also has a blued uh, handset for a full handset on that. Just gives you an idea there of sizing and overall look. Bringing in next, here it is next to a Zelos Nova in a similar coloration as far as this natural meteorite. You can see much grayer here, but I wanted to give an idea as far as for dial presence because this one is stated at, I believe, 38 millimeters versus this one at 39. And you can see certainly both dial and case. The Wise definitely has more presence to it. The Nova, if anything, does wear on the small side. Um, so do keep that in mind for the two. But this gives you an idea as far as how those two stack up. And then again, as I mentioned, I'm a sucker for blued hardware. And then finally, wanted to bring it in next to another wise, obviously very different styles, uh, but you can see this one, I believe the Hitman is coming in at 41 millimeters, if I recall correctly, but just gives you an idea of some of the range uh, that they're exhibiting here with their lineup, and they have so many more different styles that are available, but this one's quite impressive for the finishing as well. All right, so with all of that, let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of the positives, critiques, as well as the summary. 
First, for the positives, the value on this is absolutely incredible. This thing is listed as $700. However, they actually have a $50 off coupon, so you can get this for $650 for a full Damascus watch with crazy packaging, with two Damascus buckles, with a Damascus case back, Damascus crown, everything completely feature loaded for $650. And as we'll talk about next, the fit and finish uh, is just insane. The styling to me is absolutely gorgeous. I think it walks the line. It has that kind of timeless elegance while still having all kinds of pop and it just wears like an absolute dream. So can't complain there at all. The fit and finish, this is where Wise really shines. The fit and finish on this, it is as close to flawless as I have seen. I looked everywhere trying to find something to fault this with, and I really I couldn't find anything. Not a speck of dust, not a tiny scratch anywhere. That includes on the handset and all those polished areas. It is impeccably finished. And especially at $650 price point, I mean just unbelievable there what you're getting for the money. The Damascus, as we already talked about, the fact that you're getting Damascus everywhere in that level of attention to detail, I think is really quite crazy. Again, especially at 650 bucks. And then the styling, to me, this walks the line. It's kind of modern. It's kind of vintage. You know, of course, the Damascus, more of a modern touch. But then it does with that box edge crystal, as well as the kind of classic aesthetics and somewhat understated uh, look to it, especially if you look past the Damascus, but just the overall dial and those kind of things. I really think it's kind of cool incorporation there. And I love the distortion that you get from that box edge crystal. It's just the right amount of distortion just on the lip and it doesn't really distract or uh, take away any legibility from the chapter ring. What about the critiques though? This has been actually pretty hard to find much to fault for this. The only things I could really come up with is the crown. When I first got this, the threading was the only area as far as any possible quality control. And there was just a slight little bit of grittiness as you screwed it down. Not when you were winding, not when it was loose, no issues there. But as you were threading it, just a little bit of grittiness. I think that might have just been a minor burr or something for it because it's actually smoothed out just from a handful of times of uh, opening and closing it. So it's something I wanted to point out I did experience it, but otherwise, you know, pretty, uh, pretty flawless there. Legibility, this is something of with having the polished steel handset against the lighter dial, there's not a lot of contrast in terms of legibility with the exception of the second hand. So do be aware that you can, depending on the lighting, depending on the angle, it doesn't have the best legibility in the world, but it is a complete non-issue in my opinion. However, if legibility is a concern or if you want to maximize it and prefer this lighter dial, you might want to check out the old radium version where that does give a little more contrast to that. So that's something to be aware of there, though I'm very happy with my decision. Sizing, you know, as I mentioned, some people I think would prefer a little bit smaller, and I'm probably in that camp as well. While the 39 millimeters I think fits very well, I probably would have preferred if they dropped it a millimeter and went 38, though I do appreciate the extra presence that I get from this with being able to see that Damascus, and it still wears just fine. But if you have a much smaller wrist than mine, it's probably going to be pushing it for the dress style, but still definitely worth it in my opinion. And then finally, I brought this up in the past, but anytime they go with, I prefer color match date wheels. Here, with having the white, I think it blends pretty well. I do wish they would have gone with like an off-white coloration or a silver coloration for that, just to blend a little more seamlessly, but I get that that's a classic look, and many uh, even high-end brands still use white, uh, white date wheels, so that's just a preference item there. So where does that leave us overall? As I think should be clear from, uh, from this video, this thing is seriously impressive. I really don't think anyone is going to get this and be disappointed unless you don't like the Damascus styling and then you've got the 904L, but again, that's full polish. So there, that might be a turnoff for some as well. But outside of that, if you like the look of this, you are not going to be let down the quality, especially for the money in the total package you get is crazy. This is seriously one of the most impressive watches I've ever experienced, especially when you factor the sub $500 price or sub $700 rather price point. So with all that being said, definitely encourage you to give them a look really like what wise is doing so i hope this video has been helpful for you if you did like it tap that like button if you haven't already done so what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button finally drop me a comment let me know what you think do you like this variant best do you like another one do you prefer the 904l over the damascus or are you happy with the damascus packaging all that kind of good stuff thanks for watching